Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about Synology versus QNAP for virtual machines. Okay, so for many of you, when you buy a network attached storage device, all too often the reason you're doing it can be a little bit more than just watching movies or Plex. A number of you are interested in the subject of VMs, that is virtual machines. These are devices that are kind of software made to have the appearance and access level of a standard PC. Behind me is a standard desktop PC, but I also know that if I've got a powerful enough NAS, I can pop on that a virtual equivalent of this PC. I can actually rip this PC down and create a digital ISO version of it, which I can then pop onto a Synology or QNAP NAS, and they will let me have a virtual version of this PC. Now the advantages of that are pretty, you know, pretty out there. One, uh, one I did for a long time, the idea of having a PC accessible over the internet via good Wi-Fi or 4G to edit videos anywhere I go is extremely useful. I can be on the train commuting if the signal's strong enough or anywhere in the world. So for example, if I, when I was covering CBIT, I was able to use a virtual machine to upload my footage and then edit this virtual PC that was here in the UK while I was in Germany and edit it over a VM, it's very useful. Another great thing about virtual machines is testing environments. This PC behind me has got Windows 10. Now say for example, one of the programs or the entire OS had a rather large and possibly dodgy update, something that can muck up a lot of my apps in the background. A virtual copy of my machine living on my NAS gives me a sandbox way to test things without the potential loss of my system. I can try things out, I can do rollbacks and more with a virtual machine. If you run a small business or it may be something to do with education, you can use a NAS to create multiple virtual computers that have the same resources maybe once, which then several VMs can then use those resources to create virtual computers, each with one or two cores each, some memory, and then those virtual machines are used by multiple users. All of these PCs living on one NAS, all they need is a visual interface at the other end and a key VM setup, keyboard, video, mouse. So we, let's go back to my original question. Should you choose a Synology or QNAP NAS for your virtual machine? Well, both of these companies, like many of the things I talk about in these comparison videos for 2019, it's about the way, the way they have pursued this subject and their company ethos about users and what they're prepared to do. Now, both of them arrive, both QNAP and Synology, with a virtual machine software. In the case of Synology, it's Synology's virtual machine manager. In the case of QNAP, they've got a much longer running uh, software called Virtualization Station. They have a few others like Linux Station and a Container Station that we'll move away from and the same thing with Docker and Synology. We are concentrating on proper VMs. Now, both of these softwares let you down, um, you know, download and utilize copies of your existing system if you've got the hardware inside the NAS to support it. Both of them run on Intel-based CPUs as low as dual cores, but I recommend at least a quad core and a relatively powerful Intel or AMD quad core at that and higher. Both of them let you run uh, Windows VMs all the way from as low as XP up to Windows 10 and above, but you can also run Linux VMs and more. Both of them arrive with a licensing structure, but QNAPS is virtually non-existent. I mean, it's there, but you can create all manner of things. Um, but their licensing system I'll get to later on is slightly different. It's to do with operating systems. Synology have got some VM limitate, um, some licensing limitations, but it has different. I think they have loosened a lot of the rules on that. I need you to get off the, the table there, Tamatha. Another key area about this is to do with the kind of software you can run. We can talk about things like um, Android or Windows, and these are pretty basic, but so many of you out there have far more bespoke virtual machines that you want to run. Now, this is where there's a big difference between these two brands. QNAP lets you run pretty much anything on their VM station. Uh, not only can you run those Windows and Android VMs, but on top of that, you can also run things like Hackintosh, you can run uh, modified versions of operating systems, and they're quite open-minded, the software at least, about the kind of virtual environments you can create. And because they've got a big emphasis on AI and stuff like that, as well as a greater degree of hardware options with their NAS structure, the options are far wider for you when it comes to virtual machines. That said, like many things with QNAP, 
it's quite mm, you need a, a little bit more technical nous when setting up your virtual machines on there compared with the likes of Synology because Synology virtual machine manager is incredibly user friendly by comparison it is not as diverse you can't run uh, some of the more you know community led virtual machines on it but it is quite user friendly in the way it's very graphical and like oh, I want to grab that many cores that much memory it's very very easy and chewable now when we talked about licensing earlier, one of the benefits of QNAP is the not so much speed of setting up a virtual machine on a QNAP, but once you go into the software for the first time, there's an option right at the top to just download free Windows VMs. Now you will have to put it's like any copy of Windows, you after the trial expires, you can you know you have to get a license to continue going forward or use your existing license. But the idea that you can go into the software and just download VMs within the software itself is huge and it's something I don't know why Synology don't supply because even if you're a budget or modest home user if you do want to go into the field of VMs and you have the hardware to support it it can be a bit of an uphill struggle and the idea that a virtual machine software would say to you as soon as you open the app um would you like to download a VM to test just click this button once it really is that straightforward and I really praise QNAP for that but there's still no denying it it could be a little easier. It's far broader, and unfortunately, that huge amount of coverage and bespoke nature is something that unfortunately means it requires a little bit more of a learning curve. Some of the functionality of QNAP's virtualization station, such as GPU support, and uh, the fact that you can install a graphics card inside there is absolutely fantastic. You can stick a graphics card in a PCIe-enabled QNAP NAS, and then utilize those visual assets in the VM. Same thing goes with the USBs. You can use the USB ports on your NAS to make them owned by the virtual machine and therefore connect to a device to the USB and the virtual machine can use those USB ports as USB devices, something that's always crippled virtual machines in general. Now Synology doesn't have a number of these features but what it does have is a real easy to access and set up back end and it's one of those few instances where the Synology app is because it's so easy, I'm gonna to have to recommend that more. I normally wouldn't recommend something because it's chewable or user friendly, but for new users in the field of virtual machine management, the Synology application really is good. It challenges QNAP's dominance in this area very, very much. That said, you will hit limitations in a way that the QNAP won't. So do bear that in mind for the future. Uh, the last thing I want to touch on just before I go is just to do with localized virtual machine access, and it's another reason why the QNAP is still holding onto the ground very, very well for anyone above a beginner user. And that's because with their software, you can attach a keyboard, a mouse, and a monitor to the actual NAS in most cases, the ones that have got HDMI ports, and then you can have a VM as a local VM, i.e. the NAS is network accessible for backups and Plex and DLNA and all the rest of it and surveillance, but at the same time, connect a keyboard, mouse, and a monitor, and it is a standalone Linux computer, because it will just create Linux VMs at the touch of a button. It can be a Windows or an Android machine, and all of that locally with a keyboard, video, and mouse setup, as well as still give you the NAS functionality and still have VMs network accessible. Imagine a NAS with a keyboard, video, and mouse, sit there, work on it, and you go, oh, got to go to work, walk away, and then when you're on the train or the bus, access the exact same virtual machine and then when you get to work access it remotely exactly the same virtual machine and network access and internet access is fantastically easy thank you so much for watching hope you've enjoyed this if there's any other questions you've got about virtual machines then do go to the link in the comments that goes to my best virtual machines of last year to give you some idea about the hardware and don't forget if you've enjoyed this chuck us a like and a subscribe i don't use patreon or paypal and this channel is supported by your contributions and that's just you enjoying this content to keep me going thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time